Oh boy. Uh, you know, we have our, uh, expert on Italian building practices on the show this morning. So that's, that's fantastic. Mike shaking his head. Uh, Philip writes, hello, I'm an American DIYer living in Italy. I enjoy your site very much. And I'd appreciate some advice and guidance from the masters. I've read some exchanges on vapor, air, and condensation, but still have a few questions. I recently bought an old stone fixer upper in the Umbria region. The walls are traditional, made of stones and mortar. The interior is lined with a mortar and layer of plaster. The back of the first floor is built right against a rock base of a mountain. Paint peels on the interior of that wall because of the infiltration of moisture from the outside. I was thinking of putting up metal studs against that wall and then sheets of concrete waterproof sheetrock, such as Knopf's aqua panel, to create a new wall surface on which to paint or apply another wall covering like wood slats. My question is, should I seal the entire new wall, making the space behind it airtight, or leave a few openings for air to circulate behind it? I cannot open an air pathway from the outside because, as mentioned above, it's built against solid rock. Thank you wholeheartedly in advance, Philip. Oh my gosh, I love our international questions because we can be, uh, you know, even more obtuse than normal. Uh, Philip is living his best life out there <laughs> in uh, in Italy. Like, man, does it does it get any better than that? I think that's I was the new. He just put his Ray Bans on and go outside and that's, not that's even look the new, at that wall. The new right? American dream is just to sell everything you own and go live in Italy or Portugal. <laughs> I think that's. That's the new American So this is a dream. great question. You know, this house has probably been here for centuries without a problem. And everyone just like scrapes the paint off uh, periodically and then repaints it and then goes outside and enjoys the beautiful countryside and has a glass of wine. Uh, what do you think, though, Ian? Is that a, is that a long term solution? What are you going to do here? I think that whoever has been painting it has been using the wrong paint. Ooh. And that what uh, Philip should do is learn classical plastering techniques. And then he could get plaster, he could put whatever color he wanted in it, and he should do some really uh, cool plastered interior surfaces and then go Fresco. outside. Yeah, exactly. And then go sit out on his on his probably patio in Italy and he should, should just enjoy an espresso and then maybe have a Negroni with lunch and a bottle of wine with like a 14 course four hour meal at night and just live his best life, man. But become a plasterer. That's what I think. What do you think, Mike? Good advice? I think he should invite Ian to go visit him so Ian can give him some <laughs> tips on. on <laughs> Let's do it. On the plaster. Let's do it, yeah. Philip. Well, let give me you know another... where you're at. Yeah, right. Have you seen Umbria. this problem in uh, Italian structures, Mike? I I'm guessing. Well, I, 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 did, <laughs> I did not get to view any of this sort where they where he's up against a rock face, which, of course, yeah. is going to be both water flowing down the rock face where it hits the masonry wall, which is built into it. I have seen buildings done like this, but I haven't seen how they deal with it on the inside. But I, I got to agree with, with, with Ian on this because you're going to take an American solution and plug it into a, a, a 500 year old building where they've just been, you know, scraping the paint off or the plaster off and patching it every, you know, few years and not really fussing about it. Um, but if you try to do uh, what you're, what you're talking about, you're basically covering up the problem when you can't see it. And there's going to be moisture building up back there. And even though you're talking about using NOF's aqua panel, I, I had to research that because I'm not familiar with that. I don't even know if it's available in the U.S., but it's not waterproof. Um, it's basically a inorganic a type of drywall, probably like we would use a, paper, uh, a fiberglass face drywall, you know, paper-free drywall. So moisture is going to move through it. And depending on how you put finish on that, that you could end up with a, you know, stains or, or, or paint problems with that aqua panel. Um, unless you put a dehumidifier in there is really the only way to cr control that moisture that's accumulating behind that wall you build. And then now you're going to be paying money to run that dehumidifier all the time. So I, I think Ian's idea of, you know, Patch it the way it was probably done 500 years ago before they had real paint. They just were putting on a lime wash and then, uh, yeah, every now and then touch it up. Yeah, I have it's to say funny. that it's it's not my solution. I got that from Mike Mulvey, who's a, a classically trained plasterer in the Northeast that I worked with at 
Hudson Valley Preservation. So if you if you really want to get to know more about those uh, classical techniques, his, his handle is Plaster Mike uh, on Instagram and many other places. Uh, but he learned how to do all of that work in France, mostly because, you know, Americans were living the dream and going to France and buying these old stone buildings for pennies on the dollar. And they needed people to you know, turn them into structures that they could live a modern, uh, you know, Western style life in. And that's where Mike learned how to be a plasterer. It's funny. Mike we all is... came to the same conclusion independently. I, I was thinking you got to build this wall the way it was built. And, and as you both suggested, yeah. it was lime plaster on there and uh, it's, vapor permeable so it's not going to pop off and i hadn't thought about that someone probably put uh you know a less vapor transmissive coating on that ian and that's why it's failing yep I'll bet i'd you also look find for lots of uh, water management outside if you can divert some of that water that's coming down that hillside around the house you're going to have less moisture loading mm -hmm. and uh yeah boy once again i hope you'll uh keep us posted philip on your life in italy and your diy projects because i think it's super interesting and I'll bet you can find plenty of uh, competent plasters, masons there that know how this should be done. Exactly. I think it's time that Fine Home Building made a trip to Italy to learn traditional plaster techniques for. I think we got to take the yeah. podcast around the world, Patrick. I think that's <laughs> a huge, huge missed opportunity. Do we need to talk to Rob about that? No, Could we I, need to apply for one of those MacArthur Fellowship grants, uh, and I'm uh, going to get okay. on that as soon as we get off the show. I'm gonna start All right, good, calls. good. I, I could be happy to email Rob and pitch this idea to him and see where it goes. Well, I hope it works. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Well, thank you all for joining us. It's been an awesome time. Thanks for having us. Pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to remind you all about John Beer's uh, SketchUp class, the new FHB e-learning module. Check for that on the Fine Home Building podcast page. We'll put a link to it. And uh, it's uh, been highly recommended. And folks who have uh, seen the materials and uh, taken part have wholeheartedly endorsed it. So I hope you will also take advantage. And uh, I hope you'll stay in touch. And uh, thanks to Mike, Ian, and Andres for joining me, and thanks to all of you for listening. Please remember to send us your comments, questions, and suggestions to fhbpodcast at finehomebuilding.com. And please like, comment, or review us however you're listening. It helps other folks find the podcast. Stay safe, everybody. Keep craft alive. Happy building. <laughs>